Hello, hello, and welcome to this M. Lee Arc tutorial. This week's tutorial is a continuation of last week's on the topic of modeling complex geometry. Today we're going to take that model and create an animation of it. Uh, this we can easily do in SketchUp, but I'm going to take that a step further and use the free rendering software called Kirkathea. So let's get started. So first we'll do a little bit of prep in SketchUp. Here's the model we built last week. We're just going to start off by creating a backdrop. So keyboard shortcut C for circle. Click your midpoint, which for us will be on the ground plane just below the center of the model. And pull your cursor out to get a radius. And we'll type in 100 feet and enter. Right click and make it a group. So we need this floor to fold up into the background plane. So to do that, we'll start off by drawing a vertical plane. So L for your line tool. Draw out from the center point to the outer edge. And up and up along the blue axis by hitting the up arrow key. And just drawing in a square plane will do. Now we're just going to use this plane as a surface to draw an arc. So hit A for your arc tool and draw from corner to corner and pull out your arc. When the arc is tangent it should turn blue and I'm just not getting it, it's not working out. So I'm just going to switch to a circle tool, keyboard shortcut C, and draw from the top left of the square to an adjacent corner. Select the portion of the circle we need and right click and select divide, and we'll divide that by 50. So hit 50 and enter just to make our arc a little, just to make our arc a little smoother. Now E to erase all of the reference geometry that we don't really need. Select that arc profile we just made and hit S for the scale tool. We'll select the side control point, type in 0.5, and enter. So we just made the arc a little steeper. We'll use this arc to create pie slices that together will become our backdrop. Select that arc, right click, and make it a group. We'll control C to copy, control V to paste, and place it right on top of itself, just so we know exactly where it is. And then we're going to, with it selected, we're going to hit Q to rotate, and rotate it about the center point of the circle. 7.5 degrees and we're just going to do 7.5 instead of 15 uh, just to try and make it a little bit smoother. Okay, looks pretty good. Now we'll select both of them and right click and hit explode. Now it makes them uh, stickable. We'll draw on a line from one of our profiles to the center and then from the center to the other profile. And now you can see we're starting to create our pie slices. So we'll just connect both our edges. Just with the line tool. And when it hits an end point, um, your cursor should turn green. So that's when you know you're hitting a good spot. OK, so now that we're done, we'll right click and make it a group. Actually, you know what? We need to make it a, uh, a component. So create a component. Now control C to copy and control V to paste and we'll place it right on top of itself like we usually do. Q to rotate and we'll rotate about the center point 60 degrees. So now we'll copy both of those. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, place it right on top of itself. Q to rotate, and we'll rotate it 60 degrees. Oh, um, rotate it 60 more degrees. Now we'll grab all of those and rotate it counterclockwise by 30 degrees. And now we can double click into the component and start adding more pie slices and divide the work by four essentially. So repeat the process until you get your half uh, semicircle. 
Now we'll select all our slices with a box selection by clicking and dragging to the right. Make sure you only have the pie slices selected. Right click and explode to make them stick to each other. Now right click to group the selection. Double click into that group and now we're going to fill the floor in a bit more. So hit A for your arc tool and draw from one end to the other. Put your cursor along one of the edges and when it turns pink it's tangent and that's what we want so click to finish the arc. Now we'll select all connected geometry within the object by triple clicking and we'll right click and select soften slash smooth edges and check soften coplane. Now our backdrop is smooth. Now I want to rotate the backdrop so that the, the red axis is our line of symmetry, just so we can stay clean and organized. So we'll rotate it by the center point. And you can see that uh, sometimes you really need to work to find an angle that will provide you with exactly what you need. Alright, so we're going to rotate it counterclockwise 7.5 degrees. Awesome. What we're going to do now is create a camera path. You don't really have to do this, you can just, you know, kind of arbitrarily add scenes wherever you want, but this is the best way to have control over exactly where your cameras are going. Now we want to animate a very simple orbit of the model, so just drawing a circle about the center of the object will give us what we need for reference. So C for your circle tool, click the center point, and pull the radius out. I'm having trouble snapping to the red axis, so I'm actually going to zoom out a little. Uh, there you go, and there it is and an 8 foot radius should do. So type in 8 feet and enter. And make that a group. Now we're going to specify the height of the camera at specific locations along the camera path. I want the camera to be at the height of this point here on the object. Uh, it's kind of arbitrary but it does work really well for a kind of focal point. So hit L for your line tool and, and draw up along the blue axis by hitting the up arrow key and that'll free up your cursor to click on any reference point uh, to specify the height of the line. In our case, it's this center focal point. <laughs> Great, now we'll just copy that line and paste it to two more positions along the camera path. Make sure to delete the face of the circle. Any coplanar faces will show up as a kind of glitchy surface later in the render. To actually place the cameras onto those positions, we'll go up to our toolbar menu here and select the position camera tool. Click our camera position and drag, releasing it at our focal point. This tells the camera where to be and where to point. Now we'll open up the scenes window under the window drop down menu. Simply hit the plus button to add the scene and repeat this step for the other camera positions. I don't really like this view, so I'm going to delete the scenes I just made, adjust the camera positions, and repeat the steps to add the scenes. We're almost ready to export, but before we do, we need to add textures. We're just going to texture the one model, so we'll do that by hitting B, for the paint bucket tool and just give it any texture really. All we need is something to differentiate it from the rest as a kind of placeholder for a texture we'll then apply later in the renderer. Now I'm assuming that you already have Kirkathea installed as well as the Kirkathea plugins for SketchUp, in which case we can just go up to the plugins drop down menu and hit export model. An export options window will pop up. If you have something selected the first tab will read export selection only. Just change that to no. In fact, everything should be no except for geometry and default UVs. Once you've done that, hit OK. It might take a moment depending on how large your file is, but when it's finished, a window will pop up asking you if you want to export the model in Kirkathea. Just say no. For some reason, it doesn't really work. So just open up Kirkathea and open up the file from within Kirkathea. We can change the display style from wireframe to solid rendering by going to the View drop-down menu, Adjust, and Solid Render It. Now it looks a bit more manageable. There are some world settings that I adjust as a rule of thumb. Make sure soft shadows is checked and under measures adjust the radius value to 300. I got this tip from an Alex Hogreef tutorial and you can find a link for that below. Now we can adjust the materials. You can see when you click on a material in the viewport a star will appear next to the name of that material in the models list located on the left of the display. This is where all of your materials live. To edit the material, simply right click. For this tutorial, we're just going to use the default material. We'll go to Apply Material, Basic Pack, and we're just going to select Silver for this one. 
Now we need to set up a walkthrough animation. Under the Tools drop down menu, select Walkthrough Animation. This window is where we tell Kirkathea which cameras to use and how to interpolate them. First, we'll give it a name. Second, we need to specify the total length of the animation, from the first camera position to the last. Let's use 3 seconds. And the default frame rate of 24 frames per second will do just fine. Also, make sure that interpolation is checked. We've just told Kirkathea how to use the cameras. Now we need to tell it which cameras to use. Under the Camera tab, select Add Node. Here you'll find all the names of the scenes you've created in SketchUp. Simply select Scene 1 for the first camera. Add another node and select Scene 2. Add another node and select Scene 3. And hit OK to save the walkthrough animation. Now we're ready to render. In the toolbar, click the Render button. It's the green one with the running man. Under the Camera tab, select the name of your walkthrough animation. Under the Resolution tab, I like to stick with a typical resolution like 1280 by 720. Under the Settings tab, number 8 should do fine for us. The number of threads depends on your machine. I use 4. Once you're satisfied with your settings, hit OK. Now I like to use PNG files because they aren't lossy like JPEGs. It's a good idea to create a new folder to cache your frames as there may be a lot, depending on the length and frame rate of your animation. Choose a file name and hit OK. What Kirkathea will do now is render each frame and number them sequentially. Now to compile those frames into a video sequence. First, we'll look at using Adobe Premiere. After you open up Premiere and create a new sequence, just go to File, Import, and find where you cached your frames. Simply select the first frame and make sure Image Sequence is checked, and click Open. You'll see that a new sequence has appeared in your project window on the bottom left. Just drag and drop the new sequence on your timeline. Now you're ready to export the video. Just go to File, Export, and adjust your settings. These are the ones I typically use. If you don't have Adobe Premiere, you can use Blender. If you don't know what Blender is, well, it's an open source 3D animation suite. It's a free download, and it's basically just, just awesome. So go ahead and open it up. Now go down to the bottom left to switch your editor type to Video Sequence, and do the same for the bottom window. Now adjust the sequencer view of the top one to Preview. That's the checkered looking button here. Now to import your frames, just go to Add, Image, and find where you cast your frames. And you can either do a box selection by hitting the keyboard shortcut B and drawing a box over the selection, or you can just hit A to select all. With everything you need selected, just hit Add Image Strip. It will now appear in your sequencer and preview window. You can select it by right-clicking, and you can move it by hitting G for grab. And when you do, you'll see that next to the sequence, it will display which frame you're starting on and ending on. Now you can see that our sequence extends beyond the frame range. Just go to your properties window on the right and change the end frame value to match the end frame of your sequence. You can also adjust your resolution. Uh, there are a lot of settings to mess with, but the important things are your frame range, resolution, and frame rate. The default 24 should do for us. Now we're ready to export. Just go to the output section and select the output file type you want. I typically use AVI RAW. When you're ready to render your video sequence, just hit Animation in the Render section. And there you have it. How to create an animation from modeling and setting up a scene in SketchUp to texturing, interpolating, and rendering in Kirkathea to compiling frames into a video sequence in either Adobe Premiere or Blender. This is an invaluable workflow. With this, you have no reason not to include animations on your next project. I mean, come on, it's fast, and it can be done using all free software. That's F-R-E-E, -E, free. So if you want to learn a bit more about ways to delineate your ideas, continue checking out mleark.com for weekly uploads to the Tube blog and Sketch blog.